So honestly, this when I uh, woke up this morning and remembered that hunting quests were a thing, I thought to myself, oh shit, I like wasted 20 minutes on stream looking up like future drops. So hunting quest 12 is a really good chance to get drops a lot faster than doing free quest nodes. Do I think you should like treat this like a lottery? No. Hunting quests are more, if you need something on this list, like you're just a little bit shy from getting a skill like done, or you're only focused on active skills, that's what you do hunting quests. If you are missing like 200, for example, comet shards, you are better off just like farming that out over time than trying to like fully blitz through it uh, for this node because this September, this, sorry, this November, we are gonna have a lottery that has 90 plus plus for the first time ever. And that is gonna give comparable bond points to th these hunting quests. Cause I'm at, again, I'm actually surprised by how much bond points we're getting for the higher nodes. Like this is what you get during an event for 90 plus plus. So this is the, like, it says pride plus, but these, and there is no difference between pride and pl pride plus for bond points. It is only drop chance. So I will, sh I do have the actual drop uh, percentages on my other monitor. So I'll show that in a little bit. Um, so yeah, let's just go through these missions. Uh, it recommends QP because especially the last one, all of these nodes drop significantly more QP than you would have dropping in a, let's say just a free quest. Like, you know, you complete it, you like 6,000 QP. Um, these hunting quests drop like at least baseline, I believe like 400,000. So you should be using bond point CEs. You should be using QP CEs. Uh, these are not gonna drop more QP than just doing a treasure node, but if you're farming for a drop, it's just nice to get more of what you're doing. So first node, it's almost always skeletons. And again, for pride, 333, you don't have to worry about it. Just farm how you normally do. If you only care about bond points, go for it. 90 plus, uh, the 90 plus, Pretty much you have to multi core. But for all of these, they do have a little caveat that there is a chance, a chance that this enemy here gets replaced by a servant. They dip, they give you a knight metal and QP. And this QP does scale with the bond seas. It's one of the main reasons why you run it. Because these, like, this is pretty common. Like, I say pretty common. Uh, I looked it up. It's like 40%. Again, I'll show drop rates after we go through all this. So it's really hard to say. I don't, if you're doing this, I do not advise planning to like, oh, wait, that this is always going to be one, two, one. No, so you have to plan that this is going to be a one, two, two. Otherwise the run is going to go longer than it should. Second one, we have uh, Dragon Fangs, and this would be a 113. I do think 113 is just like easier to manage in terms of multi core, but like in my head, I'm thinking like use Kama because I just got her MP2, but at the same time, we don't have Ruler Scotty. So, like, doing multi core with Quick is uh, iffy if we're talking about buffs. Um,. But Night Metal, QP, moving on. This is one I actually do plan on running a good amount on because I really need seashells for Summer 7. Why do I need seashells? Summer Ibuki, um, and Summer Ibuki, Lady Avalon, and Ruler Scotty. All three of them need seashells. I already have this mapped out and I believe 
you need a hundred and thirty? Hundred and fifty. You need a hundred and fifty of these for the five stars. Just the five stars from seven summer seven. I have like ten. So my ass needs to be farming this shit. Now, do I have to go super hard? No. No, no, no. Um, but I also know what the drop rate is for this node. And it is a fact that you can get more than one uh, seashell per run. The drop rate is more than 100%. And for all the charts, when I show them later, if it's above 100% or the AP required to do the node is less than the cost, it means that you can get another drop in the same run. Again, two one, two one two. Plan for it. Otherwise, it's gonna be a two uh two one one. Uh. Next, uh, feathers. I don't need this, still. But two one uh three. Again, not as bad. Just and it's against casters too. Even better. Yeah, like as long as you treat it like multi core. Like doing these 90 plus nodes they're really not that hard the hp values are not as high as it could be uh this one two two one uh two two one two 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 uh oh right sorry i didn't uh talk about the swap swap so instead of uh night metals and one million qp it is now fruits of longevity uh, y'all you guys know what i'm talking about fruits of longevity these ones like olympus plus that you need so many for those are gonna start drop uh start dropping every run next one two two one or two 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 for the horns and roofs not farming this one either and still fruit and one million qp this one i do plan on farming just not as much as the other nodes this is just going to be for summer abuki i think i only need to get 25 from here which i say only but yeah i'm gonna farm for 25 of these uh one three two really just lancer can pretty much do it like i think percival might be able to do this but i'm hesitant to say that like for if he can clear first wave i feel that's gonna be too much parting so again multi-core uh i don't know i'm probably actually gonna bust out castoria for this i haven't used her in a while but like this is kind of i got like if i want to do this and farm it a lot i'm probably just gonna use castoria instead of like doing the multi-core stuff i usually do no fuck that this is lancers no i'm just gonna use morgan yeah i'm just gonna use the morgan melison comp i've been using for like the last couple weeks or months i don't know yeah black beast grease gears fruits and a million qp so all of these before today only last a single day last one comet shards first pages one 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 or one one three all berserkers i'm telling you straight up if you have Ku caster, this is going to be the easiest fucking farm you will do for all this shit. Ku caster, I know for a fact can hit these damage numbers fairly easily. You like, I I even want to say like MB2 Ku caster can probably do these nodes, and you just need like either an Oberon or a Vich yourself, and then assuming you have all your normal buster farming stuff set up you can easily do this node the same goes for the assassin node but i i really regret that ku caster is maxed out on my account chat because he would make this like so such an easy farm for me so easy like ku caster still slept on for how good he is just because he's a three star if you haven't if you haven't gotten him to bond 10 through farming you you should give him a try 
He is very, he is very clean, very bond point efficient. Like you're charging five stars in the back line with Kukaster easily. Uh, yeah, Comet Shard, Chris Pages, a lot of QP for this, like average 2 million. Everything else was like, uh, it was like 400,000. This is 2 million QP. This node specifically drops a lot of it and it lasts for two days. So, uh, give me a sec and I will put up the drop rates now. Okay, so I have this blown up on the Caldea app, which this is how I know like exactly how much stuff I need to farm all three of my accounts. Uh, it is a very tedious process though. I'm not going to lie, especially if you spend money on the game and you have like more than I'd say 150 servants, trying to do this is a nightmare, but it's something you do one time and you just, every time you level a servant you just tick off the box. So you know not to over farm stuff uh first note uh yeah so as you can see here the night metals it's around it's two out of five close to 50 percent chance of uh the node turning from 112 to 111 it's not something you need to bank you should be banking on it really it you're gonna have a bad time if you plan to always get the proc. Uh, but 333% uh, evil bones. And again, this scales with the drop CEs we get from advanced quests. So if you have bone CEs, if you have the fangs, put them on for this. You will get more drops. As you can see, it's 333%, meaning you are almost guaranteed three with a chance of four. That's the base chance. Sorry. Um, and five, and again, this is the 90 plus. This is the 90 plus. So there's five enemies there. So drop rate, I'm assuming, is close to like. It's hard to talk about drop chance because the big enemy is pro probably has a higher drop chance than the four small ones. But just uh, just assume that if you put on the drop uh, drop chance CEs, that you might get four more consistently, maybe even five. Uh, treat it like that, and you should be good. Um, same for Dragon Fangs. Uh, good chance of getting three. Seashells, 145%. So it is one chance of two. Uh, Phoenix Feathers, one chance of two, but the chance of two isn't that high. Uh, proofs, you're almost guaranteed to get to a run. And this is at 73%, you're most of the time you're getting a drop. Otherwise, yeah. Black Beast Grease. 70% same deal here is 120% you are guaranteed to get one of these every run with a chance of two and then the comet shards it's 40% chance scale and like the the chance of you getting this is literally the same as you getting the two um the 1 million qp it doesn't show on here but it's about the same chance and then first pages are uh at 109 this is only the 90 plus though. What does the 90 look like? Uh, okay, and yeah, this is just gonna show the comparison. Uh, so it is a higher chance that the friendly servant is gonna swap out. That's the main difference that this enemy is going to swap out. Also, drop chance, higher base. This one, I, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why the other stuff is not showing. It probably should, but is what it is. People probably just didn't run it, uh, so they don't have the data. Yeah, people, people ran it. Yeah, it shows how many runs people did, just so people can check their fact. Take this. I, I want to say take it with a grain of salt because there's just not enough data for it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 
guys couldn't see it wrong one um a lot more data on the 90 plus than the 90. i don't think this is fully accurate but i'm willing to bank that it's a lot closer than people would realize um scroll up so you guys see yeah it, for the most part it goes from guaranteed one to chance at two just and that is just to change the node to just be 333 so it really depends on you for do you want to run the node more or do you want to yeah like if you have plug suit maxed out and you don't want to use it just run the just run the 90. you'll it will save you such a fucking headache but if you want to risk it for the biscuit like go for 90 plus it's a, it's more efficient you'll get it done quicker uh all right give me a sec i'm gonna take this down so this again all goes back to do you even need to run these nodes if you don't need the drop you don't need the mana prism from completion don't do it besides what you need to for the daily quests because i know the daily there are daily quests they're gonna be like run the hunting quest a certain number of times just run whatever you feel most comfortable at doing and do that and then get out get your free rewards and then dip out because the next week we, we don't have anything. No more events. This is pretty much just Oku and Arm until like e even during July. That's pretty much going to be the same thing. If you didn't finish Oku, finish Oku in July. There's not going to be much going on. Warm up what you need for uh, the Servants or Summon Summer 7 and or who you pulled in the GSSR. Really just a and Arquid, obviously. Um, it, it, again it really just depends on uh your situation uh i just wanted to make a video about this because that like i do think about this st stuff like fairly often i'm almost done leveling all my uh five stars across both accounts so i like last bit of advice if you think you need to farm for a pens, I would highly advise against it unless it is imperative for that unit to be able to farm with the event. For instance, Buster Servants with 30% uh, batteries, I do think it's oh, it's wise to spend the time to farm it out on these nodes if it makes the difference of you being able to do like farm with that servant or not. Case in point, Saber or Artoria. If you do not have uh she's actually a bad example because she doesn't need it like that for her pen let's say they need comet charge summer bb so you want to farm with summer bb uh oh no she doesn't she doesn't need the pen either Fuck. oh shit um i'm trying to think of an actually good example uh, and this just pissed me off hmm you guys get the idea though if like if it's not gonna make a difference in your farming don't stress about it you will get it eventually as long as you just play the game like if you if you don't play for four months you really don't have the right to complain you don't have enough materials to level you missed out on four months of playing the game no shit you, you're not gonna have mats um yeah i'm gonna be uh when it comes down to it i'm going to be farming uh seashell black beast crease and comet shards a lot our next lottery is in november uh but there is an infinite lotto or infinite farm event in uh gooda gooda seven eight i, I lost count i'll be i to be honest I, I don't know which one we're on anymore uh oh summer yeah gooda gooda seven uh that is gonna have infinite farm i forget what the gold mats that were part of that just make sure you look up what you actually need. Don't over farm and waste your AP if you think you can use it better. All right, that's it for me. Peace.
Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.